I grew up in a house full of music. Whether it was my mother playing the piano, my grandmother playing the organ, my other grandmother singing hymns softly to herself. There's always been music in my house. We sang as a family in church. I've listened to my mother and father sing specials in church. I've participated with and watched my aunt and uncle and cousins sing. Music is a huge part of my life. In fact, it's been a huge part of my life, not just in the good times, but also in the bad. I can think of so many funerals I've attended of believers when I heard gospel songs and songs that were so full of hope about what what really is there for us uh, when we leave this life. In fact, if you have any background in the church and listen to gospel music growing up, you'll know that there was a huge section of songs by gospel bands that were all about the joys of being able to join our Father in heaven. When we look at our passage today, which is Acts 16, verse 25, and it's one of my favorite parts of this story, we see a story about music. Paul and Silas have been stripped publicly, they've been beaten severely, and now they're in jail with stocks around their feet. And in Acts 16.25, the writer of Acts, Luke, says they're chained up, but they're singing hymns and praying. Even in the midst of these difficulties, Paul and Silas knew that praising God would help to connect them to him during a difficult time. I don't know about you, but singing brings joy to my life. Music brings joy to my life. And in moments of my life where I feel the lowest when I feel the darkest, I can always turn to music to help me to feel better. The other important part of this verse I think we might overlook sometimes is that not only are Paul and Silas trying to draw near to God through music in a difficult and dark time, but it says the prisoners were listening to them. We have an opportunity when we struggle as believers to show others how much we trust in our God. And I'm not saying that we have a magical formula that we never feel pain, we never feel doubt, we never feel far away from God. But we can react and we can sing those songs of praise. We can pray to him and cry out to him even when we don't feel the emotions we want to feel. Because our God listens, our God hears. And when our friends hear our cries to God, our calls to God, our singing and praising of Him, even in our darkest times. I believe the Spirit uses that to make a difference in their hearts and can draw our friends closer to Him and are committing to what Paul and Silas did in that prison. My encouragement to you today is that you, in your darkest and and hardest times, don't forget that God hears you. You don't have to have a great voice. You don't have to sing in pitch or on key or get all the words right. But when we voice our praise to him, even when we don't feel it in our heart, he hears us and he draws nearer to us. And at the same time, when we are voicing that praise, our friends hear us and they're listening. So I say to you, when you're struggling, don't let that stop you reaching out, praising vocally the God that loves you.